A simple bouquet can express more than a thousand words. And that's a quote by The Language of Flowers by Vanessa Diffenbaugh. Hello, my friends. I'm so happy to see you. Today, I thought it would be a lot of fun to talk about floriography. Now, that's a term that people use to describe the Victorian flower language. It was sort of a secret language that people used to share their feelings with others. Now, here in the Southeast, there are a ton of flowers blooming right now. So this morning, I went over to my friend's flower farm and I picked some of her flowers so that I could bring them home and show them to you and tell you a little bit about their symbolism and if they have any medicinal properties. So first up, we have the ranunculus. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Ranunculus doesn't have a fragrance, but it is characterized by its multi-levels of petals. And this flower is originally from Turkey. And out of all of the flowers that I have to show you today, this is the only one that is poisonous. But isn't that just gorgeous? This one is variegated, so it has little purple and pink on its white petals and then this one has sort of a peachy pink outer layer and then the center is sort of yellow and then it gets to chartreuse. Isn't that just beautiful? I'm mesmerized when I look at these. Next up is the anemone and in the Victorian times they symbolized forsaken love. And while I was doing some research about the anemone, two things of interest popped up. First of all, there is a sea creature called an anemone. And second, there's a Bible verse in which Jesus talks about consider the lilies of the field. They don't they don't spin and they don't toil. And he was actually talking about anemones because they grow as wildflowers in Palestine along the banks of the Galilee. And I thought that that was really interesting that this could have been actually what Jesus was talking about. But aren't they beautiful? And these don't have the red one has a slight fragrance, just ever so slight, but it almost has a mint or a green fragrance rather than a floral fragrance. I love those. These are so fun, and you may recognize some of these. These are called bachelor's buttons, and the bachelor's button symbolizes love and availability also known as a cornflower and as chicory. Now, the blue ones are more of the wild bachelor button, and then these are more of the, the cultivated, more of the domesticated bachelor's buttons. But if you've ever been down to New Orleans and had beignets and coffee, chances are you have drank something called chicory. Well, the root of this bachelor's button is what they use to make chicory out of. They grind it up and roast it, and they make a coffee substitute. So that is a bachelor's button. This one is so fun to look at and to say. This is called the corn cockle. Now the corn cockle symbolizes gentility and worth above beauty, and it was once used for jaundice and constipation. This one is very delicate. The petals are very, very thin and delicate. There is no fragrance. But isn't that just so intricate? The little details inside of that. Isn't that beautiful? That's the corn cockle. 
Next up is calendula. Calendula symbolizes joy, remembrance, and grief. And this has long been used in skincare preparations. So what they do with the calendula leaves is you dry them and then you can infuse them in an oil like say sweet almond oil and then use that sweet almond oil after a month or two of infusion as a, a skin healer. You can use it in a healing salve or you can use it in a beauty cream. So it's excellent for your skin. Now, oh, I could sniff these all day. These are sweet Williams. Now, if your great-grandmother or grandmother had these growing in her garden, she may have referred to them as pinks. And these symbolize gallantry, and they're a member of the carnation family. They have sort of a slightly sweet and spicy smell. And the flowers have a very mild flavor, and you can use them in different things like salads, or you can sprinkle them on top of cakes. They're very, very pretty. And I could sniff these for days. They just smell so good. And interestingly, if you look at them, which one do you think would smell the most fragrant? I would think the darker ones would, but it's not so. It's the white ones. They are very, very intense. These two aren't quite as intense. So that is Sweet William. Next up, we have yarrow. Now, yarrow comes in a variety of colors. And in the Victorian days, yarrow symbolized war and healing. It has a very slight fragrance to it. It's, it's a little stinky, actually. It's not very pleasant. <laughs> it's beautiful, but I don't like the smell. You can use all of the above ground parts of the herb. You don't want to use the roots. And they've used it to fight stomach cramps and infections. So that is the yarrow. Next up we have peonies. Mm. Now, the white peony symbolizes purity and new blessings. And the root of the white peony has been used in Chinese medicine for anxiety and depression, and it also has an estrogenic effect. The white one smells a little tiny bit lemony, and it also has a slight creamy fragrance. That's the best way I can describe it. It's sort of creamy. This one kind of stinks. It smells stinky. It's not a good fragrance, but it's so interesting that the same kind of flower can have such a different fragrance. It's like roses, too. You know, roses have different fragrances, too. So, But this one is just mesmerizing to me. My daughter and I couldn't stop looking at it because it's just so beautiful. And these grow in the early spring. They have a, as soon as it gets really hot out, they stop growing. Isn't that gorgeous? And that's the peony. All right, now we have the snapdragon. This is so fun. Did y'all know that snapdragons can do this? I guess this is why they're called snapdragons. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> you can make them talk. I love it. Isn't that beautiful? These come in a variety of colors too. They don't have a, a big floral smell, just a slight hint. They symbolize deception and grace. And medicinally, the snapdragon's extract has been found to reduce cancers of the lungs and of the colon. So isn't that beautiful? It's a snapdragon. And again, maybe that's how they got their name, because you can make them snap at you. <laughs> and last but not least, we have the Black-Eyed Susan. 
Now this symbolizes encouragement and its roots have been used to treat colds and worms in children. And that doesn't have much of a fragrance either, but it sure is pretty to look at. Thank you so much for watching, friends. I hope that that was enjoyable for you. What is your favorite flower? I would love for you to tell me in the comments and tell me why it's your favorite. And do you know its symbolism, its Victorian symbolism? Let me know. Y'all take good care and I'll see you on the next video.